You know, either that guy has a musical rest under his nose, or he's sticking his tongue out at me. Hello friends, this is Seth of the Sickness LPs, and welcome back to some Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. In the last episode, I believe we took some advice from a paranoid schizophrenic in the... Well, basically, what he was teaching us to do was teleport things using over-glorified Lego blocks. Yeah, that wasn't our best idea, but hey, it actually worked somehow. So I guess he wasn't so crazy after all. Still very paranoid, though. Don't know what he's talking about, the bread. The bread is a lie? I thought it was the cake, but it seems we were all deceived. Anywho, let us continue over here, not get killed by the lava that's gonna splurt out. I actually almost got killed by the lava there. I'm not very good at taking my own advice, but luckily I'm just good enough to make it happen. Anywho, you can head out here, and we get to a fairly open area. Pretty interesting open area. It's like every other open area, except more interesting because, you know, it has vines on the wall. Yeah, that makes something interesting, right? Can you climb it? No, thank God, because according to The Legend of Zelda, climbing vines are extremely time-consuming. Anyways, heading down here, we will continue over this way and break some pots and also find a sparkly door. Sparks is indeed blue, so, you know, we shouldn't try our luck. We should do it right now while he's still blue so that he doesn't get zapped to death on the way through because that wouldn't be fun for Sparks. It'd be pretty hilarious for us, though, I'm not gonna lie. Slide down to the bottom before it's too late, and don't worry about me. Save yourself. Uh, not Professor Squeak. I can't leave you behind. Who the hell are you? Anyways. What? <laughs> he just gives you a choice. So what? It's like, quick, if you don't slide down the volcano, you'll die. So, um, feeling suicidal today? Not at all, which is why I will slide down the volcano. Yes, so let us do this. I'm gonna slide down the volcano. Another slide. I don't particular. I actually remember this being the hardest of the slide, and considering how much trouble I had on one of the last slides, this is probably gonna be pretty hilarious to watch. But somehow I have some speedrunning skills right there. Just cutting corners and still living to tell about it when the corners don't even exist because they go down into a bottomless pit of. Well, to be fair, it wouldn't even be the lava killing me at that point. I'd just be falling down. And I mean, we are going to the bottom of the mountain, right? So what quicker way to go down than jumping down, considering we take no fall damage in this game. Shouldn't you be, like, sliding down too to save your life? But I, I don't know. Sure, yeah, stay up here and give me pep talk while I do so myself. Yes, I'll slide down the volcano again. Again, yeah, okay. Because, you know, you fall into the lava and you're supposed to be coming back to tell about it. I guess that is the power of destroying animals that are disguised as bottles. I guess they're bottling up all their feelings. All right, let's do this the right way this time to avoid some unnecessary weird jumps. Yeah, so apparently by feelings, I mean butterflies. So, you know, you know those cultures who attribute animals to feelings? Yeah, they were kind of right. Except for the part where instead of multiple animals, there's only one animal that englobes all of it, and it's the dragonfly. And by dragonfly, I mean butterfly. Dragonflies are just useless. Totally. That's why we need to catch them as our slaves. Uh, uh, whoa! I cannot believe I survived that. This is the greatest run ever I shall win this time around. And I do know there's a split path here, like there tends to be on the slides. So it's probably... Let's hope that I don't end up falling at that point, or at least let's hope that I choose a split path that makes sense. Because if I don't, well, chances are I will not be living to tell about it. Also, I love how Spyro dies as soon as he touches the lava here, and yet usually, so long as he has Sparks with him... Say, wait a minute. The reason I'm dying is because Sparks isn't with me. What the hell are you doing, Sparks? You're supposed to follow me everywhere, not ditch me when I need you most. Okay, so he, he's, he's a loyal friend. Accountant thing. Anyways, uh, holy crap, I, I swear I was gonna die there, but I didn't, because I'm good at Spyro- Is that it? Am I almost to the end? Am I gonna make it? Am I gonna- Holy crap, holy crap, holy- No! No! And it's not even the end. Not even close. Anyway, whoa, well, there is the end. Don't get crushed by a boulder on the way- Hey, weren't you at the top of the mountain? I didn't see you pass me. You're worse than that friggin- 
You made it just what? in time, Spyro. Here, I found a dragonfly on my way down. The one up there was called Professor Squeak. I remember squealing out your name in mock misfortune when I heard you were gonna die. But apparently you didn't die, so that was all for naught. Anyways, he found a dragonfly, so I guess it's a good thing he didn't die, because he had to give this to us. Saji! Saji. I like that name. I don't know why. Uh, really? So, just be What? The volcano has stabilized. You- No! No! I'm not gonna put my life in peril a second time just because I can. I'm not that kind of person- Well, I don't know. But, no. 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 I'm out of here. Okay, come back anytime. Yeah, come risk your life anytime. Thank you. That's great advice, Professor Squeak. I can see why you got a doctorate in whatever it is you do. So not only does he have some kind of secret passage that gets him all the way down to the mountain when we had to risk our lives, but he wants us to do it again. You just just out of fun. Yeah, no. Anyways, no, don't, don't freeze the things. Okay, that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go for it. You know what? No cuts. I'm gonna do... Okay. I lied. April Fools. Well, you can't say that my videos aren't educational because, admit it, you learned something today. Bubbles don't light electricity torch thingies. You also learned that an electricity torch thingy is a thing because I did not just make that up off the top of my head because I didn't know what the hell these thunder rods were supposed to represent. Not at all. So anyways, let's continue up here the right way this time, and we're actually going to spray electricity on the things that need electricity sprayed on them, as opposed to using bubbles. Because, I don't, I don't know, bubbles does not sound like a very good idea right now. And they give you an overdose of time for that, I probably could have made it. Very challenging indeed, apparently it is for Spyro, because he doesn't know that bubbles don't mean electricity. I don't know. But apparently he can figure out that bubbles capture dragonflies. I, I don't know, I guess maybe he thinks he's just shocking the dragonflies' wings with the bubbles so that they can't leave. Yeah, that makes sense. That would explain why he thinks bubbles have anything to do with electricity. Yep, yeah, anyways, you can head over here. I don't believe there's anything else over there. In fact, I'm pretty sure I already checked. So I don't know why I would make you go through that terribleness again. And I will just leave this place behind and pretend it never existed while shocking this guy to death because he dies to electricity. I guess it could be some kind of short-circuiting thing, uh, but to be fair, they don't look like they've been totally patched up with metal, or at least they weren't patched up very well. You look like a hobo's pair of pants, sir. Anyways, I'm gonna continue on here and... Okay, we've got these things... That is just kind of weird. Look at that geyser. It's like small on the bottom, large on the top. I'm not even sure it's a geyser. It looks more like this random stick that happens to not melt in the magma that is just corroding its way. Crap. Oh, crap. This is not good. Run, Spyro, before it tilts you to death. Does it ever actually fall off? I always figured it falled off. Falled off. Yes, good English right there. But I, never, I was never actually sure. No, it just tips over because it has awesome physics engines that don't actually work when it matters. Anywho. Alright, that's, that's, that's cool enough. I guess it makes sense that it wouldn't fall off considering how wide the top of that magma geyser is for whatever reason. Anyways, let's kill this guy. Continue on here. Because we can, for no other reason other than that, and we found a checkpoint. You got a checkpoint! Just what I always wanted! Yes, this was Spyro's Christmas present because... It's Christmas in Spiraland right now. Yeah, their 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 days are all mixed up. In fact, knowing knowing how I keep time on my consoles and stuff, it probably says it's Christmas right now for all I know. In any event, we will continue on in this cave of very eerie glows coming from the sky. Look at that. That's, I would comment on how this doesn't really make sense to me, but at the same time, this is really interesting. But we will see what is going on in these caves of awesome interestingness in the next episode, where we do just what I said about two times. I'll see you guys then.